Okay, let's look at problem number 13. In 13, we'd like to find the limit as x goes to 0 of tangent of 7x divided by sine of x. Uh, and similarly, we still have this information that's going to be helpful to us. We have limit as x goes to 0 of sine x over x, that that's equal to 1, and we're going to use that to help us out. Right now we have a tangent up here, and tangent is not that easy to work with in this type of a problem. So typically what we want to do is transform that tangent into sines and cosines. So I could rewrite this as the limit as x goes to 0 of sine of 7x divided by cosine of 7x divided by sine of x. And of course, if I have a sine of x on the bottom, that's just the same thing as having a sine of x divided by 1 on the bottom. So I could write over 1 so that I have a fraction divided by a fraction, and I can flip and multiply. So I could rewrite that this is the limit as x goes to 0 of sine of 7x divided by cosine of 7x times 1 over sine of x. Okay, so now that I've got this set up, uh, I see I have a sine of 7x on the top. And so it would be really, really great if I had a 7x on the bottom. And on the bottom, I have a sine of x. And so it would be really, really great if I had an x on the top. Because in both of those situations, I could use this limit to say that that is just 1. So on the bottom of a sine of 7x, I'd like a 7x. On the top of a sine of x, I'd like an x. So generally, my policy is let's just put in the things we want and then see what damage we've done to our equation. So let's write it in. We have the limit as x goes to 0 of, uh, OK, so I have sine of 7x. And I said on the bottom of sine of 7x, it would be ideal to have a 7x. So let's just write it in for right now, and we'll see what we have done to ourselves. And then I also said on the bottom over here, we have a sine of x. And it would be really great if I had an x on top of that. What else do we have here? We also have cosine of 7x on the bottom. So I'll say 1 over cosine of 7x. Okay, what did I do here? I already had a sine of 7x right here. I already had a sine of x right here. And I already had a cosine of 7x right here. But I didn't have a 7x on the bottom and I didn't have an x on the top. So this x over x piece, those would just cancel out and give me multiplication by 1. So really all that I've changed here is I multiplied the bottom by 7. I can't just go around multiplying the bottom by 7. I can only multiply this thing by 1. So if I'm going to multiply on the bottom by 7, then I better also multiply the top by 7. So now everything is exactly the same. I multiplied on the bottom by 7 times x and on the top by 7 times x, and that's all I've changed. So I've only multiplied by 1, and so everything is the same. But now I could move that 7 outside of the limit, and I could write this as 7 times the limit as x goes to 0 of sine of 7x over 7x times x over sine x times 1 over cosine of 7x. And now let's look at each of these limits individually. The 7 just stays around because it's constant out in front. And then let's look at each of the limits. This is the limit as x goes to 0 of sine of 7x over 7x. That has exactly this form, so that limit is 1. Then I have the limit as x goes to 0 of x over sine of x. And it doesn't matter which one of these is on top or which one is on the bottom this is still going to give me a limit of 1. So I get times 1 times the limit as x goes to 0 of 1 over cosine of 7x. Well, as x goes to 0, 
that's cosine of zero, which is one, so I get times one. So it's seven times one times one times one, which is seven. So the limit as x goes to zero of tan seven x over sine x is seven.